uh, appropriate for uh, for XRP. There's a lawsuit hanging over Ripple right now. A group of uh, people are saying that XRP and Ripple are sort of tied together, and that they, you know, XRP could considered an unregistered security. Um, what would you say to them? Well, it, it's pending litigation, so I'll probably be a little bit. Uh, you know, muted on the topic. Uh, suffice it to say, you know, we don't think it has merit. Uh, you know, these are people who didn't buy XRP from us. Uh, you know, we also don't believe XRP is a security. Uh, I think, you know, one of the poignant arguments in my point of view is, you know, if I went back to the office and said to the team at Ripple, hey, we're shutting down, XRP trades on 130, 140 exchanges around the world. XRP would keep trading. So you're like, wait a minute. Okay, so if it's a security, it's a security of what? Uh, it's not a security of Ripple. You know, it, it doesn't give you the rights to dividends or ownership of Ripple, the company. We we have shareholders of Ripple, right? We raised a Series A financing, a Series B financing, uh, and we own a lot of XRP. But they're they're two separate things. At the same time, uh, we've seen recently Block One uh, had the hammer come down on them from regulators. They uh, were uh, basically said that they were selling an unregistered security. Five um, twenty four million dollars. Just it's interesting you call that a hammer. They raised four billion, and they <laughs> yeah, it's a light hammer. It's a light hammer. <laughs> You and I it's would a little bit, yeah, a, maybe it's a fly a toy swatter. Hammer, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, either way, so what's the difference between Block One and their token EOS uh, versus you know what you guys are working on? Well, I think one really important distinction is the XRP ledger existed before Ripple, the company. You can, you know, it's a public blockchain. You can go back and see kind of transactions zero, one, two, three. You can see when Ripple was incorporated in the Secretary of State in California. Uh, it, Ripple didn't create the XRP ledger. The XRP ledger had utility prior to Ripple's existence. Uh, you know, certainly, we are an interested party in the success of the XRP ledger, for sure. We own a lot of XRP. Uh, but it's a little bit like saying you know, Exxon owns a lot of oil. That doesn't make oil a security. <laughs> Exxon's clearly interested in how to, you know, we can argue about the health of the, you know, I'm not here to debate c carbon emissions. Climate crisis, <laughs> you want to get into that? No, Maybe this is an example I wanted to choose here, but <laughs> suffice it to say, Exxon cares a lot because they have a lot of... Kenny, UBI, Universal Basic Income, how would it work? How would you actually distribute the money? Because many people have been saying maybe electri electronic digital wallets could be the answer to this, but many people don't... Some of the poorest people in society who need it the most don't have access to banks or indeed at the same time uh, the internet even. That's a very good, uh, good point because what we're saying here with... Uh, testing, not just testing some of this, but making it happen. It has to go hand in hand with what is today probably one of the greatest drivers of a new inequality, which is access to the internet. We've seen now that the pandemic has really pushed us into a virtual world. And those that do not have access, digital means, whether it's to access cash, to access uh, education, uh, new skills, are getting far left behind. So you're seeing a digital gap that's really growing, uh, worryingly so. If I look at in our region, a country like, let's say the Republic of Korea, over 90% have access to the internet. Then I look not that far away, uh, let's say at Timor-Leste, uh, and it's uh, just around, just over 3% of people have access to the internet. So for UNDP, a big push is to see if this can be supported as a public good, uh, because there's a big difference uh, between the inefficiencies of trying to provide something like a temporary basic income through old cash transfer means and doing it digitally. It's interesting, the uh, UN Secretary General's uh, report just came out on digital finance, and this was co-chaired by the, the head of UNDP, and one of the findings was that for in public accounts, uh, a government transaction, you can uh, save about 40% per transaction. Just think of the efficiency gains in uh, going through digital finance and hence digital wallets. So we've been experimenting with this, including in the Philippines uh, and in, in other places. People are now realize that the public blockchain was was uh, a mistake. They're trying to implement privacy on top of it. People are now in, uh, concentrating on the environmental impact of proof of work uh, and the like. So, it's it's playing it's playing to our strength, and it's getting real this year. Uh, one thing I want to mention is the entire Italian banking system will be on quota for interbank payments this year. Hundreds of millions of transactions will be transacted on quota this year. So it is getting real. It's been six years.
that, that feels people refer to this as the Aaron of the crypto space. This has been picked up by Forbes. I have to ask you, Tom, what has been going on? I know. I wish Forbes would have reached out uh, for an official comment, but uh, yeah, Forbes did pick it up. It was a little bit more of a joke, but uh, I mean, but that's what happened. That's what happened in Enron. I mean, Enron was pretty much cooking the books, and they had uh, they had a fake instrument. They were selling these. Uh, uh, I guess contracts on uh, energy, but there was nothing there. It was all just smoke and mirrors. And that's how I see the Ripple token. And I've always explained it that way. There's absolutely no reason for this token to exist. Uh, there's no reason to add a very volatile currency. And Ripple is insanely volatile. Ripple just dropped 20% in a single day the other day when it fell from 30 cents down to 26 cents. Uh, I mean, uh, these things are insanely volatile and there's no reason for them to exist and um and they keep making up reasons for it to exist now there is a lawsuit going on right now claiming them to be a security but that lawsuit is not coming on behalf of the sec uh, that lawsuit is coming on behalf of an individual so it's not exact I, I don't really know what's going to happen there we do cover it on the bitcoin law review and uh yeah, I know one of the lawyers didn't like the fact that I call everything a scam, but I would have given Forbes a more official comment. Uh, but yeah, the Ripple token is a really, really sad situation where it was created back in 2012 or so uh, just to make money, basically. And now the company has spent the last six years trying to disassociate itself from this token while at the same time trying to find make up any reason for it to exist on a final note tone i do want to ask you bring in alex holmes he is the chair and ceo of moneygram uh alex look welcome to the program we really like to have people on the show who are taking advantage not taking advantage of but um i, I would say a, a new kind of company that benefits from this new economy are your transactions up a lot at uh, moneygram uh yes sir they they are as a matter of fact it's been um Quite a uh, transition for, for this company over the last couple of years. Um, we have seen a tremendous surge in uh, digital transactions over the last two years and really an incredible surge uh, over the last quarter since the, uh, since the pandemic really set in. 106% growth last quarter in digital transactions and about 27% of our uh, total company transactions. So definitely uh, have seen a, a tremendous increase as consumers you know, look for current, you know, coronavirus safe ways to send and receive money. I'm an old-fashioned kind of guy. I like to write checks. Are my days as a check writer numbered? Uh, you know, my, my standing joke on that is I think you